once asked Jesus, what's the most important command in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two commands depend the law and the prophets. When the Bible talks about the law and the prophets, it's talking about the Old Testament, specifically the definitions for sin that God gave Moses. Take, for example, the Ten Commandments. Commandments 1 through 4 have to do with how we are toward God. Commandments 5 through 10 have to do with how we are toward other people. So if we love God and we love other people, we won't break the Ten Commandments. We won't break the law. But here's the thing. The law exists to show us that we are law breakers, which is why we need Jesus. So if we summarize Christianity with love God and love your neighbor, we'll be making the mistake of equating Christianity with moralism instead of grace, which is the gospel. The law shows us what sins are, but Jesus came to save us from our sins. Well, 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 so Eliza Childers strikes again. She references a passage about the greatest commandment. Now pay attention to her quotation. She then says, when the Bible talks about the law and the prophets, it's talking about the Old Testament, specifically definitions for sin that God gave Moses. Take, for example, the Ten Commandments. Commandments 1 through 4 have to do with how we are toward God. Commandments 5 through 10 have to do with how we are toward other people. So if we love God and we love other people, we won't break the Ten Commandments, we won't break the law. Okay, that looks good and I agree with her statements here. But watch closely and you will see her use grace as a crutch to break the law. She then says, but here's the thing, the law exists to show us we are lawbreakers, which is why we need Jesus. So if we summarize Christianity with love God and love your neighbor, we will be making the mistake of equating Christianity with moralism instead of grace, which is the gospel. The law shows us what our sins are, but Jesus came to save us from our sins. Did you catch that? Very deceitful explanation. There it is. Let me define four terms that are key to understand. See the screenshot here. What is moralism? Or what is meant by moralism? Definition of moralism, the habit of, or practice of moralizing, a conventional moral attitude or saying, an often exaggerated emphasis on morality as in politics. Moralism is simply the living moral habits with a moral attitude. Now I'm gonna add one here, moralist, which is 1828. One who teaches the duties of life or a writer of essays intended to correct vice and inculcate moral duties. One who practices moral duties, a mere moral person. A moralist is one who teaches and lives moral duties, basically. Real quickly, how about grace, which was 1828? Favor, goodwill, kindness, disposition to oblige another as a grant made as an act of grace. Appropriately, key word, the free unmerited love and favor of God, the spring and source of all benefits men receive from him, favorable influence of God, divine influence or the influence of the Spirit in renewing the heart and restraining from sin. Favor, mercy, pardon. Now, brethren, pay attention here. Not in one place does it say undeserved affection, pardon, favor, or mercy. The words undeserved, not earned, and not referenced doesn't appear anywhere in the given definitions. Now the word unmerited is found, but the key word is, like I said, appropriately. Let's look up the definition for Christianity. See the screenshot here. The religion derived from Jesus Christ based on the Bible as sacred scripture and professed by Eastern, Roman Catholic, and Protestant bodies. Conformity to the re Christian religion, the practice of Christianity. So Christianity is simply a following of Jesus Christ based on the Bible. Therefore, we should live as followers of Christ with morals by attitude and habit by the grace of God. Is that scriptural? Yes. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 through 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Cross-reference, Revelation 14.12. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Imagine that. <laughs> Therefore, if we define literally what she is saying here by her latter statements, 
what she is literally saying by definition is this. But here's the thing. The law exists to show us we are lawbreakers, which is why we need Jesus. So if we summarize being followers of Christ with love God and love your neighbor, as Jesus said, we will be making the mistake of equating following Jesus Christ with living by morals, by attitude and habit instead of the favor of God by letting grace cover us, breaking the law, which is the gospel. The law shows us what our sins are by the law, but Jesus came to save us from our sins, from breaking God's commandments. You see, this is actually what Eliza Childers really believes. You see, she makes fair speeches and makes it look good and sound good. But what she really has in mind for her theology is that it's okay to break the Ten Commandments and not take them literally because we have Jesus to cover for us. His grace will freely cover us, believing that grace is unconditional favor with God regardless. She believes the Ten Commandments show what sin is, but we really don't have to take them literally or keep them. In her mind, following Jesus Christ is totally separate from living morally. They don't coexist, according to her. What heresy? Her theology is based on the double standard hypocrisy of, yes, I believe in morals, but I have Jesus as my morality. Therefore, no matter how I live, Jesus will always see me as his child. So according to her, we can privately interpret the Ten Commandments. Hmm. Take all the Ten Commandments here. So, according to her, we can reject what they literally say and interpret them however is suitable for us in our lives. For example, she believes Christmas is not pagan. For her to believe that, she would have to reject what the Ten Commandments literally say. Also, does she keep the Sabbath? No, because she would use the same excuse that people like Frank Turek uses that nine of the Ten Commandments are repeated in the New Testament. That's a lie. Only six are repeated. Paul equated following Christ with keeping morals, which is law-keeping. For example, Romans 13, 8, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Keep the phrase fulfilled the law in mind. Verse 9, For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 10, love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. There it is again, fulfilling of the law. How about verse 11? And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Why should we awake? Because our salvation is near. Why should we be concerned about this? Because loving God and our neighbor is linked to keeping God's law. Now let's go back five chapters. Romans 8, beginning in verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Two separate laws there. Verse 3, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Why? Verse 4, watch it that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There it is, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Wait a minute, let's go back five more chapters. Romans 3.31 Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Wow. Biblical numerology. Chapter 13, subtract 5 equals 8. Chapter 8, subtract 5, equals 3. What is 5 plus 5? Equals 10. The Ten Commandments. Just an accident? No. Conclusion. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six. the main text that she referenced. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Let me ask you this. Is Jesus contradicting Paul or the other way around? No. If you are a follower of Jesus, then you go by what he said, not what you think he said in your opinion. In Matthew 19, he already established that to get eternal life, you keep the commandments and quotes in context the Ten Commandments, the summary of the moral law of God. Quick fact. Following Jesus is linked with keeping God's law, not different or separate. Alasa Childers is exposing herself once again as a moderate false teacher. She will use the Ten Commandments to, to declare what sin is. But she doesn't even believe in keeping the Ten Commandments, literally, because in her mind, that's contrary to following Jesus. Brethren, don't follow false teachers like Alasa Childers or Frank Turek. Sure, they may have some correct points, but they are not biblical Christians. I've already sent her a message, and she's never answered it. Watch my previous video. I forget which one it was in my uh, playlist series exposing Alaska Childers. She's a moderate false teacher. She looks like a sheep, but she's actually a wolf in sheep's clothing. I will pray for her, and you should pray for her too, that God will open her eyes to the truth. If she doesn't open her eyes, and if God, if she, if she rejects the truth, then God will turn her away to the lake of fire. I pray she gets her eyes open and stops this moderate churchianity false gospel preaching. Love the Lord Jesus Christ, fear God to keep his commandments, and read and believe the King James Bible. Thanks.